This is an update to a video I did back in 2023. Let me show you what the, the challenge was and what the problem was. So look, I wanted to be able to pick from here like a movie and then from the movies, pick an action movie. And then from this list, pick a type of movie. So a cascading drop down list. And I can do it again for another row. But this time I want to go actor and pick a comedy actor. Click on the drop down. But look at this. I've got Will Ferrell and Robin Williams are in my comedy list, just as they were. So if I change this to comedy and I click on the drop down, because they're actors under comedy, they're showing up in this list. I don't want that. So I'm going to show you how to fix it. And also a couple of other little things that had comments from the last video. OK, let's go. All right, without rehashing the old video, like I said, there's a link in the um, notes below in the description and a little link will pop up. Go watch that first if you've not seen it. But here's the concept. We've got our master list repeated like color with all the different combinations. And then for red, we've got all the different combinations. So you have this one master list. OK, that's the starting point. And then we're using some functions. So the first drop down list is going to be this because it's using unique and grabbing all the unique items. OK, the next bit, this was the clever bit, OK, that it actually goes and looks at the color and then into a row, it converts into a row. That's the two row bit. It grabs the unique items corresponding to color. So it grabs red, green, blue because it grabs color here and grabs the unique combinations. OK, so that's that formula. And then for the third item, Again, over here, let's open this up. We've got these different options in here. So here's the actual unique list of that those second items, the second column. I can do say, I'm going through this quickly. If you're getting lost a little bit, go watch the first video. Um, and then I get it again. I filtered the third column, list number three, where the list equals this. OK, so that was what was happening before. But there was this issue where if you had two different things called comedy, so you had actor comedy, but you had movie comedy, the third choice wasn't differentiating between these two. And um, there's a comment in the YouTube channel would, would really had the solution in here from uh, Ortley, I think the handle was. Um, so here we go. We're going to go into the workings page. This is the updated file that I've got. OK. And essentially, this second list, OK, you've got to append the two lists together, the two sort of first and second choice. So we're grabbing, here's the formula, list one ampersand, then the little vertical pipe. You don't actually have to have that. You can leave it out, but it just makes it easier to read if you put that little pipe symbol in. Um, and list two. So that's the unique combinations, OK? And then this formula gets edited to say, hey, can look up, OK, or filter, basically, this list where the combination, so list number three, where the combination equals this result, OK? And that's the change, really. And then you copy this formula down the page. And just to re remember, this is list three. And if you had list four, You'd need to, it gets a bit messy, but you'd need, you know, if you had a fourth drop down, you'd have to duplicate this table and basically have this being a combination of all the previous three selections. OK, and then this formula would need to refer to list one ampersand, then list two ampersand list three. OK, so the more lists you have, the longer the formula gets. But, you know, it's, it's pretty logical about how it works. All right, and then the other change you need to make is in the original, OK, if I highlight this column, OK, we just had a simple, for this dependent column, we just had a simple data validation. So let me go to data and data validation. It was this function. This is the magical bit here, the X lookup, OK, with the hash on the end. So what it was doing, it was if we look at action, OK, it was to provide that list 
this list is looking at this cell, E8, movies, looking down the level one choice column and bringing back the level two results. And the hash was allowing it to grab the row. So let's have a look at movie. If I go back to my workings, we go down the level one choice. We hit movie and we bring back this level two result column and the hash allows you to see all three results, okay? Which is cool. So that's that doesn't actually need to change. It's this next column that actually needs a new formula. It was using the same one, the same formula as this, just referencing the different um, column here. But if we go into this one now, okay, what we are saying here is look up both movie and the dependent, so E8 and F8, with that pipe in there. If you left it out on the other list, leave it out here, you know, put it in both or leave it out of both, and then look it up. And that's the change, okay? So then if I try to go movie, comedy, and click on the drop down, I get, you know, the hangover. But if I pick actor, comedy, I should only get Will Ferrell or Robin Williams. Okay, so that's pretty cool. And then the other one, people were able to actually type anything in. So there wasn't a warning when you pressed enter, it didn't stop you. And the trick to that is that that list of data validation, if you go to it, data validation, you've got to turn off ignore blank. All right, then it's a bit annoying. So if I come in here, I do the same thing, data validation, ignore blank. And then for this one, data validation, ignore blank. You get all these, um, if you've pre-built some lists, you get all these annoying little flags. And if you click on them, it says data validation area error. So a quick fix, I'm not sure how sort of, you know, great this is, but you can just click on it, highlight all the ones, all the blank cells, click on it and say ignore error. But now if somebody tries to type something in, they just won't be able to, it doesn't matter where they try and type it. So that's the second fix. So I hope you find that useful. Honestly, go watch the first video where I take more time explaining how I build it. This is just an update to show how to stop people typing anything in and how to make that final column dependent on the previous two selections. All right, hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. Uh, description and everything should have links to other things and to this file for you to download. Okay, I'll catch you in the next video.